We turn now to male infertility. It is an affliction that many struggle with in silence, and we could be headed toward a crisis. Researchers have found that male sperm count has plummeted by 50% since the 1970s. But why? ABC's Trevor Alt has this report. There are many ways to measure a man. Brian Mazza, an entrepreneur and fitness influencer featured twice on the cover of Men's Health Mexico, checks a lot of the traditional boxes. But on this day back in December, as Brian finished a 50-mile ultramarathon, he was thinking about something that at one time made him feel like less of a man. Thank you guys so much for the support. We raised over $63,000. That money will go toward fertility treatments for families struggling to conceive an issue that pushed Brian and his wife Chloe's marriage to its limits as Brian learned he was the problem. It was really hard until then when we finally got checked and it was like, er, the record stopped and it was like, time out, guys. We have a larger issue here and it's with Brian. How did you feel when you got that news? It was really hard for me to look at myself in the mirror and, and be like, wow, I have this issue. I don't know why I have this issue. What's going on? What's contributing to it? I didn't fully understand it because no guys ever talk about it. Um, I didn't know any other guy who had this issue. So I didn't know who to turn to. Like many men, Brian at first kept his fertility struggles a secret, not even telling his own family out of a deeper sense of shame or fear. But eventually, he and Chloe decided it was time to open up, sharing their struggles on social media. It was really remarkable how many guys reached out to me on social saying, I'm going through the same thing. I feel the same way. In fact, a male factor is identified in 35% of couples with infertility. But let's face it, talking publicly about your sperm can often be awkward or taken as a joke. Brian is making it his mission to destigmatize the topic, something many scientists are in favor of. You know, you'd go to a cocktail party. You'd talk about, oh, I went to the doctor, I got a high cholesterol, I better not eat this dip, right? But you wouldn't say, oh, I went to the doctor and my sperm count is low. I think getting this discussion out there is a good thing. Dr. Shanna Swan is an environmental and reproductive epidemiologist, the author of Countdown, How Our Modern World is Threatening Sperm Counts, Altering Male and Female Reproductive Development, and Imperiling the Future of the Human Race. Her team collected and analyzed nearly 200 studies of more than 40,000 men, and they found in Western countries from 1973 to 2011, the average sperm count decreased from 99 million per milliliter to 47 million, a drop of more than 50%, and a pace that, if it were to continue, could have an enormous impact. Is that as alarming as it would seem to be? It's very alarming. Sounds like a lot of sperm, 47 million. But actually, once that drops below 40, we see sharp drops in fertility. What do you think this means for the future of human reproduction? It's going to take longer and longer to conceive a pregnancy. More and more people are have to go to assisted reproduction, which is already happening. And fewer men are going to have adequate sperm of the quality needed for sperm banks. And that's happening as well. Multiple factors may be causing these trends, and they are very much up for debate, but they generally fall under two categories, lifestyle and environment. Things like smoking, drinking, stress, obesity, and age have all been shown to potentially affect fertility, but Dr. Swan says certain chemicals pervasive in our environment are also having an impact. They're called endocrine-disrupting chemicals. These chemicals are found in products many of us use every day, from things like electronics to plastics, even cosmetics and food packaging. Dr. Patricia Hunt, a geneticist at Washington State University, studied their impact and their prevalence. The reason they're called that is because they have the ability to mimic or interfere with our body's hormones. These chemicals can alter the formation of organs and organ systems in the fetus and change behavior and influence things like our reproductive ability. Is it even possible to avoid them or are they that pervasive that it's kind of a foregone conclusion? It is impossible to avoid them. Um, You know, it is possible to limit your exposure to some of them by making choices and, and changing your lifestyle a bit, but we can't really avoid them. 
Dr. Hunt and her lab studied the effects of endocrine disrupting chemicals on mice, and they found that not only would it affect the fertility of the mice who were exposed, but those changes would be passed down. If that individual's father, grandfather, even great-grandfather was exposed, our data would indicate this, the effects are much more severe. So it kind of increases with each generation? Yeah, it's kind of a, a snowballing effect or a train wreck. Dr. Hunt says after three generations of being exposed to endocrine disrupting chemicals, one in five of the male mice were infertile. Of course, humans are not mice and more research is needed. There are currently no peer reviewed studies that show such endocrine disrupting chemicals cause low sperm counts in humans. We have lots of requirements for ingredients, no requirements for what the packaging is made of. Consumers can make good choices if they're educated. So I'd like to see some package labeling that would allow them to make decisions. But regardless of the cause, a growing number of men like Brian Mazza are grappling with infertility, what it means for their families and how they see themselves. To a man finding out today that he is the cause of fertility problems in his relationship, what would your message be to him? My message would be very simple to him, that you're not less of a man. You're not less of anything you think you are or what anyone is saying. So now let's identify those issues and just know that there is help along the way that can give you some hope and that can assist you in achieving your dreams as being a dad. And there is help. Today, in vitro fertilization accounts for as much as 3% of births in the U.S. and Europe. And while Brian and Chloe acknowledge it can be expensive and it isn't always successful, hey guys. Hey. Hey. it's allowed him to become the father of two beautiful boys. We actually have pictures of their embryos in their room from the process of IVF. There's no shame in it. When times are rough and when I'm tired, or when we're exhausted, or when they're screaming and the life is so hectic. I say to my wife sometimes, and she says to me sometimes, like, we almost didn't have this. For ABC News, I'm Trevor Alt in New York. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.